yeah in this session we'll discuss about oracle workflow overview of workflow builder oracle workflow is one of the graphical tool which is used in the oracle e-business suite for the purpose of business information sharing or it can be for approval purpose so the major purpose of a workflow builder tool or maybe workflow component in the oracle e-business suite is for the purpose of sharing the information or it can be for approval purpose also it's majorly a graphical tool you don't see any technical coding in this one and there is no programming language involved in this one and most of the business functionality will be written in the PL SQL logic so from the workflow component we can call a PL SQL API and that's how we'll be writing the major business logic so once Oracle workflows tool is installed in your system you'll see this particular icon Oracle workflow builder and this is how it looks like once you open your workflow builder and this is one of the example of how a workflow process looks like let us discuss what are the major components of a workflow the major building blocks of a workflow process components are the high level components item type then you'll have a process a process will have a list of functions and a function will have a list of notification messages attributes and we'll discuss one by one like uh, we'll discuss one by one by technically seeing a sample workflow design let's wait so a workflow will have the file as file extension wft the top level component in a workflow is item an item will have a process a process will have a set of activities and we also call it as functions and this function also can invoke a PL SQL program or it can be just an activity an activity or a function and the next level of component is a process can also have a notification a notification is always linked to a message the content what you would like to see in the notification will be written using a message and the other major important component is attributes so these attributes are the basic building blocks the reason is like this in attributes you'll have the you'll be storing temporary values where exactly where, where this particular attributes will be used in the process or maybe within the notification or activities to have the proper business flow okay so let us see how do we design a workflow so now I'll just open the workflow builder let me close it and open it again so in my system I could see a workflow shortcut on the desktop just open this one so one more thing before before opening this particular one make sure that you have set your TNS entries in the workflow developer so I'll try to go to my workflow installation directory e, e drive oracle home underscore one network admin TNS name dot or a file in this one make sure that you have set the database details in my case it is VIS instance now once this particular workflow once your Oracle eBusiness or database information is set now it is good to open our workflow tool open the workflow tool yep this is how it looks like and here if you observe this is a file menu click on file you can just click on new once you click on new it will create this untitled hyphen one information so as of now the file is not saved just click on Control s save as now it is asking whether you want to save the file in the file system or database we'll discuss about what is this particular different approach here the first thing is we'll save the file in our local system and then we'll migrate to the database so now select the click on browse and select the location where we would like to save the file i would like to save the workflow in my direct this particular directory i will name the file name like this xxlt SWF sample workflows click on save now check out the workflow directory in this one we could see WFT file here Oracle workflow builder tool the type as workflow Oracle workflow builder and now this is just a WFT file in this one we'll create our initial component on this particular file perform a right click click on new item type and here mention the internal name this is a unique name which is of having maximum length eight characters only so I'll just mention XXLT okay sample workflow and I'll just say XXLT sample workflow and you can also have the same description here and now this internal name is a unique one okay so I'll just click on apply and okay yep now this is a top level component of the workflow and this is also called as item now this item have will have this set of components 
And here, these set of components, all the components are not mandatory to have a workflow, but we'll try to design a very simple, work, simple hello world workflow. And let us see what are the basic components we require in that one. Okay, so click on save. Click on process. Right click on the process here. Click on new process. And now mention the process name here. XX LT PROC1. This is my process name. I'll just say XXLT. Hello process. And I'll have the same description. And click on OK. Yeah. Now let's open the process. Right click on the process. Click on this icon. Click on the process icon. It will show the it will show the window where we have to design our process. Now the first component in the process should be start activity. So here there are two ways of creating the activity or maybe function. You can perform right click on this function or you can also try to create a function from here. So we have an icon here, new function. I'll just click on new function here. Now the mouse cursor changes to plus symbol. Just perform left mouse left click here. And now it is asking us to mention the function name. So I'll just mention the internal name as start. For every component in the workflow, you will have internal name, display name, and description. Okay. Make sure that you provide the appropriate naming convention and unique names for that. So now the icon is function. The icon here we have to let's change this function icon to start. And now mention the function name wf underscore standard and no operation. So here what are we trying to do is like here the basic building block of a workflow workflow is process. In the process we'll be designing our business logic. So in the in this particular process the first activity should be start activity and we have to call the API call wf underscore standard dot no operation here. So why are we calling this particular no operation package no operation method is this is the one which will initialize the workflow that's the reason we have to call this particular method and also click on node and set this particular one to start. Click on apply and OK. Now this is our start activity and the same way we have to create one more activity called end. Click on new function and here mention the function name internal name as end display name as end and description as end and also icon as end. Now mention the function name wf underscore standard and no operation here and on the node click on set select end click on apply and OK. Now we have a start activity and also we have an end activity, but what we'd like to do is we want to design a workflow which will send a notification to a user. So in, first of all, we we'll, we have to create a message because a notification should contain a message without having a con without having message. We cannot send a notification so that what do you require is we require a message. Now on this message right click here click on new message. I'll just say XX. Hello message. XX. Hello message. This is a message internal name and now we have to mention what is the content you want to specify in the message. So this is a subject. Hello world message. And in this text body, I'll just say hi. Simple workflow. Hello world message. Regards workflow team. Okay. You can apply and okay. Now create a notification on this particular one. Right click here, click on new notification and I'll just say XX, hello notif. Here we have to apply the message. Click on, click on this drop down and select the message which we created just now. Click on OK. okay. Drag and drop this message onto the process window here. Now we have to connect these particular three activities one by one. So select the first activity start perform a right click here and drag and drop the line onto the notification the same way. Select the notification perform a right click and drag and drop the line onto the end. A notification always require a performer. So the performer is nothing but to whom you want to send the notification. You can either set the value at runtime or you can set the value during static designing of workflow. So in our case as this is our first workflow we'll try to design we'll try to set the value of this particular performer during design time itself. So I'll hard code the value here. So click on this notification. Now click on node and here we could see some we could see the type called constant for the performer. I'll just say operations. Click on apply and okay. 
Now save the workflow. Now try to validate. Click on this particular validate I verify icon. Now successfully validated. So as of now, our workflow is available only in our local system. This is not yet saved in the database. One basic thing is until unless our workflow is available in the database, it cannot be invoked by the Oracle eBusiness Suite. So the concept here is so the WFT file, the WFT file, as of now, the workflow, whatever we created, it is available in the file system as a file. But in real time, or maybe if you want to execute a workflow from the eBusiness Suite, this particular workflow should be stored in database so how exactly this will get stored is like a, we have for the workflow purpose we have two kinds of tables one is workflow metadata tables metadata tables and another one is transaction tables so whatever the workflow we have defined now this will get so stored in database let us see that so before storing the database let me show you the workflow metadata tables wf item types tl so now here i'll try to search with our workflow name so just to know that our workflow name is unique name is equal to so mention the workflow item name so this is the one click on properties internal name search with the internal name so as of now there is no workflow with, with this particular name in our oracle a business suit instance what i will do is now so i'll select the workflow and save as select the database now mention apps information here so now here we have to mention the instance name for which our TNS name is configured. TNS file is configured here. So just now we configured our TNS name Sora file with for our workflow developer with the VIS instance. Okay. Click on OK. Now this icon will get changed from your file system to database icon. Yep. This got changed now. Now check it check it from the database that this particular workflow file will be available in the system. This, will not, this particular workflow is not saved as a not saved as a your WFT file. It will be saved in a record by record fashion. Okay, and there are a lot number of tables involved in storing the workflow metadata like item for item you'll have one table process you'll have one table notification you'll have one table messages you'll have one table attributes you'll have one table. Okay, for each particular co <laughs> component you'll have a different table involved. But anyways, so as of now our concentration is on like as of now we just designed our simple hello world workflow and we could see how we can save a workflow in the database and let us see how do we invoke a workflow from PL SQL program. So there are different ways of invoking a PL SQL. There are different ways of invoking workflow. So let me write here. What are the different approaches in invoking a workflow is like a, from PL SQL program, from Java program, or from the workflow admin web from the workflow administrator web application responsibility. Okay, so let us see the first approach. So now to invoke a workflow, always what we require is we require item name, we require process name as well as item key. So let us see the coding involved in invoking a workflow. So this is the sample coding which we use it for the purpose of invoking a workflow. This require your item name. So what is our internal item internal name? This is the one properties. Yeah, this is our internal item internal name. And the next one is process name. So this is our process name. Always make a note of your internal names, not the description or a display name. And the next one is we require a sequence also. Here, the API which we use for the purpose of invoking our workflow is WF underscore engine is the API. In this one, we have the first particular method called create process. In the create process, we have to pass item name, process name, as well as item key. Okay. Now set the item key. And here, as of now, we don't want to set any of the temporary variables, so we can ignore this particular logic. And now set item owner and just simply start the process okay so before invoking a workflow i'll just open the e-business suit here refresh i have yeah let me log into the system now operations welcome okay so let's see the notification window as of now just refresh this one okay so now what i will do is click on sql developer now try to invoke this one just execute this particular anonymous block. Enable the DBMS output also. Now refresh the Oracle eBusiness source screen. Refresh. Yep, we got our hello world message. Hello world workflow. XXLT sample workflow. The type, the type name, it means that your workflow item name. Click on the subject here. We could see our sample workflow message. Hi, simple workflow, hello world message regarding workflow team. Every workflow will have a notification ID. Make a note of this notification ID. And now, 
now what we do is we'll try to refer to the workflow notification workflow transaction table to find out like uh, who invoked workflow from where it went from whom it went what is the status of that everything we can see it so we have a table called workflow notif wf notification table wf notifications in this one just pass the notification id where notification id is equal to notification ID. so now in this one you'll have the information what is the status of the workflow access key and main group key and the message type so this is our message actually the content which is getting shown for this notification this is a message message type message type is nothing but uh, it is item type name and the message name is nothing but the content of the message this is a message name this particular message name will have the content that will that is getting displayed for this particular notification but here the message type means your item type name this is nothing but item name okay so let's get back so here what what exactly happened is we can also see the process how it got invoked nothing but like what is the status of workflow and all those things also so now what we do is go back to the workflow administrator responsible now workflow administrator web applications administrator workflow now click on status monitor now in the status monitor what we can do is we can try to validate what is the status of a workflow nothing but like a, what is the status of a what is the present status of a workflow where it reach from where it started to whom it sent everything we can also observe here so to search this one what you require is we have to know either name or display name or internal name so i'll i'll make a note of the internal name so search here Now click on this one you can only click on status diagram and see the status of this workflow so we always try to see like if at all if you if you face any issues for the workflow this is a status monitor which will help you out in debugging it like where exactly it reached this green color line shows that it went from where to where now if it went it started from start activity then it went to the notification activity from here it went to end activity so this is how we can trace out like a, from where a workflow went to in which position okay so this is all about our simple hello world workflow.